Okay, this session we continue to uh, talk about the biblical principles of establishing and maintaining the uh, design of the church that Christ uh, gave us in the scripture. 这一节课我们继续研讨，呃，在初级教会主为我们呃设计的呃应有的模式。And we continue our study about uh, responding to the persecution that's going to come upon the earth uh, in the last days. 我们在呃继续研讨，好，研讨这个在末期这个受迫害的我们的回应。And we've said that Jesus gives us four uh, principal uh, responses. Uh, to persecution. Uh, now the first one we listed was to pray for our enemies. One of the reasons I list, list this first is my own experience that it took prayer for me to work through my flesh and my natural reaction to my enemies. 这个就是我用我的个人的经验来跟大家分享，这个要需要一段时间，借着祷告来调整我们对呃仇敌的那种态度。And as I stated earlier in the previous session, I started as I prayed, I began to be angry about my enemies and toward my enemies. But by the time I finished praying, I had compassion and pity upon them. 上一节课，我们就是呃讲到一开始我们为这些仇敌祷告的时候，我那个心态呃心里里面是充满着恼怒跟怨恨。So that even if my enemies uh slap me or beat me or whatever they did to me, I could look upon them through the eyes of Christ and have love toward them.以及我要学习怎么样用耶稣基督的眼睛来看这些。but this compassion and love had to be worked out in me through prayer. So whoever chooses to be your enemy, an individual, family member, uh, some religious group, uh, and or uh, uh, government, Learn to pray for them specifically. So, uh, we through prayer that God will change your heart and your attitude toward your enemies. You know the book of Acts in the uh, account where Paul and Silas were in the uh, jail. And they had been beaten for uh, being true and faithfully uh, uh, preaching the gospel. And Paul and Silas set a good example for us, and that is that instead of being uh, angry or, or hurt or want to get even with the jailer, they began to pray and praise God. Uh, uh, and you know the story that uh, they began to pray and to praise and when they did uh, God blessed uh, and ministered through their prayer and praise to the enemy they were convicted uh, the uh, jail doors were opened by an earthquake and miraculous things began to happen 所以他们在监牢里面，呃，被人打了之后，他们继续在那祷告、祷告，一直祷告。那个地步，他们能够高声来赞美神，神迹就发生，以及监门也打打开了。So the first response to persecution, uh, would be prayer and and praise, as is illustrated here in the book of Acts. 所以受迫害的第一个回应，要为他们祷告。There's something about prayer and praise that releases. 
uh, the hurt and the feelings you have and emotions about persecution, and it focuses on the Lord and not upon the persecutor. So, we the second step, Jesus said, in order to have a godly response to persecution, was to love those who persecute you. Again, in the natural, in the flesh, this is impossible. Only in the Spirit and by the power of the Lord Jesus living His life in us can we love our enemies. Our natural response is to hate our enemies. And to retaliate back toward our enemies. But because Christ lives in us, He will live His life through us and will demonstrate love even toward enemies. The scripture says that Christ loved you and me even while we were yet in our sins. And while we were sinners, uh, Christ died for us. And then the familiar passage in John 3.16, God loved the world, which included you and me, so much that he gave his son. So Jesus said the godly response uh, to persecution is to love your enemies. You know, we've told you in previous studies that there are several different Greek words for love. And this kind of love that Jesus is talking about is a love that is a God kind of love. Only Jesus can love through us in this kind of emotion. The natural and the flesh cannot respond uh, in a agape type love or a God kind of love. Only God can do that. It is that godly ability and grace that he gives us to be able to say to the enemy while they are striking us or beating us or whatever, uh, I love you. The natural man can't do that. The natural man wants to retaliate and come against the enemy as they beat you. But the love of Christ uh, expresses love. You may remember the story I told you probably uh, three trips ago or so uh, that when the leaders of the church that I was pastoring when I left, they wrote me a letter uh, that was uh, written by a legal attorney. And the letter in essence said, uh, because you don't believe as we believe, uh, we want you to remove uh, your membership and, and your association with us because we don't, we don't believe like you do. 
就是说，呃，因为我的信仰有改变，我们不愿意认同你的信仰，所以从今以后呢，呃，我们呃跟你的关系再不是教会会友之间的关系，所以你已经不是我们教会的会友了。They were wanting my wife and me and our two sons to withdraw from them and to, to leave their、uh, congregation. 他要呃，等于下逐客令，把我跟爱人跟两个孩子都啊。呃呃，除名不在属于教会的会友的名单里面。And that hurt us deeply because we had known and loved and ministered among these fine people for over ten years. 这个我过去我们呃认识已经十年，跟他们是认呃呃有很深的交往，呃，但是对我们来讲，他们用这种的方法来对付我们，使我们非常的难过。We had led many of them to the Lord, baptized them. We had married many of them as couples. We had、uh, buried their loved ones when they died. 我们曾经呃呃给替他们举行婚礼，看到他们生儿育女，呃呃给他们施浸，甚至为他们的呃呃亲人举行的呃丧礼呃追思礼拜。呃，我们建立了很深厚、很浓厚的交情了。So it broke our hearts that they didn't want it to have anything to do with us anymore. So when we see this kind of warning, we are very sad. So I cried out to the Lord in prayer and I said, "Father, help us to see this kind of warning. 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 我关心的不是那些人怎么样对付你，我关心的是你的态度是什么样。So the Lord gave me、uh, the following letter to、uh, return to them. 所以我就呃呃主就感动我写一封回应信。And、the best I remember it, I, I said to them, I love you in the Lord. I, I do not have any desire to separate myself from you as a part of the body of Christ. 所以我在信里面说，我爱你们，我也不真的不不呃愿意呃和你们分离。I have nothing but love in my heart toward you. 我们我我们对你你们的呃呃心意只有爱。And if there is to be any separation, you will have to do it. I cannot do it because I do not want to separate from any part of the body of Christ. 我们身为基督的一份呃的身子的一部分。我们真的是舍不得离开你们，除非你们坚决要跟我们断绝来往。And I signed it,、uh, I love you in Christ. 然后我签名的前面还写在基督里面，呃，荣呃，爱你们。I could have only done that by the love of Christ in me. It was not my natural or my flesh that would enable me to do that. 这不是我的老我能够做得到，乃是基督在我里面才能写出这样子的信。So it's that kind of loving response that God says, "I will give you the grace to respond in love to those who persecute you." So it's the Lord is giving me this grace, so that we can give the Lord's power to respond in love to the persecution. In order to love like this, you have to first admit, "Lord, I cannot love; only you can love like that through me." 所以我们必呃，我那个时候在回应主，我不能靠我自己呃付出这样子的爱，只有靠着你，我才能够做到。And be honest to the Lord as you pray for your enemies. And,、uh, let him know how hard it is, how difficult it is. He knows that, but it's good for you to express that to him. 呃，所以很重要就是你呃，当你遇到这样子的难难题的时候，你要很诚实、坦诚的对主说：“主，我办不到，求你帮助我。” And cry out to him in prayer that he would love the enemies through you and express love through you. 然后呼求主，让主能够使用你，呃，透过你把基督的爱，呃，分享出来。So when you are are tempted and tested not to love someone, just stop and realize that Christ loves you and me even when we are in sin. 所以我们一直要呃确认一件事实，就是在主基督。在我们里面，我们还在做罪人的时候，他仍然的爱我们。And we are to follow his example and allow him to demonstrate that same unselfish love towards sinful men who are who have chosen to be our enemies. 
所以呃，只有有这种的心意，我们才能够按照主的心意去爱那些选择与我们敌对的人。The third godly response to persecution is to say good things about those who persecute you. 呃，第三个回应就是呃，在他们的背后，甚至在他们的面前讲好的话。The natural or the flesh reaction is to get right back at them. If they say something bad about you, you say something bad about you about them. That's the natural flesh reaction. But Jesus said it doesn't make any difference what they say about you. You are to respond by saying only good about them. 但是主教导我们，不是因为，不是要听他们对我们怎么样攻击，重要的还是我们怎么样说好话来回报他们。You know the scripture says that Satan is the prince, the power of the air. 我们知道，呃，撒旦是这个地上这个呃呃地上的王。And when someone gossips or says something bad about another person. Satan and demonic spirits always make sure that that message gets to the person that's being talked about. And it's amazing how bad things and evil speaking will get back to us. And how seldom good things get back to us. 而这种闲言闲语讲出去的时候，魔鬼往往把这些闲语呃报应在我们身上。所以因为这个缘故，我们更加要谨慎，不要讲坏话，因为这些坏话讲出去以后会报应在我们的身上。People tend to tell us bad things that somebody said about us. 呃，我们呃。听一些听到这些闲言、闲语或者攻击性的话，都是动机都是恶的。So that's Satan's way of making sure you get the message that somebody gossiped about you or gave an evil report about you. 所以那恶者更要把这个恶传来传去。Remember, I told you that evil reports and gossip were spread about my wife and sons and me. 呃，记得有一次我分享过我的呃有一些的闲言闲语，呃攻击我跟我爱人还有我们的孩子。And they said that、uh, we were a cult。他们说我们是异端。And a false religion。是一个假的宗教。And、uh, they said that we had、uh, lost our mind。呃，说我们呃呃呃已经呃癫狂了。And that at one point we thought we were like Noah。呃。一直呃达到一个地方，我们好像呃旧约圣经那个挪亚一样。And I described to you how、uh, people misunderstood this and thought because we lived in the country and had some animals that they thought that we somehow had lost our mind and thought that we were Noah。呃，是以为我们已经癫狂了，因为我们呃当时住的一个地方呃是一个农场，里面有一些呃动物呃养在那里，呃人家就以为我们变成挪亚要养动物了。But God gave us the grace so that when someone said some evil report to us, we were able, only by the grace of God, to speak back to that person who gossiped.、Uh, that we love this person、uh, and we said good things about the person. 但当但是当我们呃有机会碰到播散这种谣言的人，我们呃却借着基督的爱祝福他们，呃对他们说好话。And it's difficult to continue to say evil about a person. Who continually says good about you? So, imagine this slander people always want to say bad things, but the fourth godly response is to do good to your enemies. The fourth godly response is to 用好的行为来回报他们。Now this is,、uh, I suppose, one of the most difficult things that that、uh, occurred in our lives. We sought to work through prayer and love and saying good, but doing good was seemingly more difficult for us. 呃，我们为他们祷告，爱他们，讲好话，都比较容易
The Holy Spirit would uh, speak to us and say, uh, uh, go visit the person who is sick in the hospital or sick at home or whatever. The same person that chose to be our enemy and was gossiping and spreading lies about us, the Spirit said, go and minister to them while they're sick. In my natural self, I didn't want to do that. I had bad thoughts about them thinking, well, I'm glad they're sick. They finally get what they deserve. But I knew that wasn't of the Lord. And so I'd have to confess those thoughts to the Lord, ask His forgiveness. So I'd say, yes, Lord, I'll obey, and I would go to the hospital or to their home and, and visit them. Or my wife would cook something and take it to them while they were ill at home. The Holy Spirit would convict me sometime when some of these people that persecuted us would lose a loved one in death. Holy Spirit would say, go visit them and comfort them, and I didn't want to do that. But the Holy Spirit would lead me and convict me, so I would go and attend the funeral or go to the home and extend my sympathy to them. And the amazing thing happened to change my attitude as I fulfilled and obeyed each of these steps of the Lord. When I worked through the godly responses of praying for them, uh, and loving them, and saying good, and doing good toward them, I found myself being totally relieved and released of all of the pent-up anger and resentment I had. And my wife and I could honestly feel in our hearts a sincere love and, and a sympathy and an empathy for these people because we realized that, that they didn't know what they were doing. You know, in the other session I mentioned that you as a Chinese church went through 50 years of persecution. Uh, God was gracious to me because He only put me through about half of that time, about 25 years of persecution. But by learning to respond in a godly way, the Lord has allowed me to see the restoration of relationships of those who chose to be my enemy at one time are now friends and again brothers uh, in the Lord in fellowship. So But if I had not learned to respond as Christ commanded me, these people would still choose to be my enemies today. Let me tell you one uh, brief story about how, how God uh, restored relationships. I think it was in the uh, 
mid, mid to uh, latter part of the 1980s that this occurred. That somehow through God's sovereign grace, He chose uh, for the city of, of our town where we live uh, to ask us to be the judge of the city. Uh, uh, I had told you an earlier testimony that I also served as, as mayor of our city. And the municipal uh, judge's position was uh, an uh, appointed position, not elected. And so I was appointed to serve at the death of the judge. I was appointed to serve out his term. The reason I mention this is because it illustrates how God was able to, by my godly, our godly response to the grace of God, uh, to go from being an enemy of the community now to be the judge over the community. Uh, and some of the same people that had persecuted us and caused a lot of problems in our lives had to come before my court. So I would sit behind the judge's desk with the judge's robe on and these people would be brought in by the local police authorities and stand before me in judgment. So my natural flesh response was, I'm the judge and they are guilty of this crime. Uh, I will find them the largest fine I can or if I could, I will put them in jail. But the Holy Spirit, of course, convicted me, and I realized that God had allowed me to come full circle from being someone who lost their mind, someone who was supposed to be a cultic, false religious leader, now I had come to be recognized as the judge of the whole city. So the Lord gave me the grace to be merciful to these people and to find them the least amount I could find them uh, and uh, to uh, let them go free. So so if we are faithful in, in our godly response to our enemies, our enemies will become our friends eventually. And God will make a change in their heart as a result of our faithfulness to respond 
uh, in prayer and love, saying and doing good. So we, uh, uh, the change in their attitude may not take place in our lifetime, however. God was gracious to let me live to see the day that the, the school circle would come and my enemies would become my friends. But the Spirit reminds me of an incident in the, in the book of Acts where Stephen, a godly man, was faithful to respond in a godly way to his enemies and yet they killed him. And the very man who acted on and encouraged it, standing there holding the clothing of those who were throwing rocks, was Saul of Tarsus. But as a result of the testimony of the faithful martyr of Christ, Stephen, Saul of Tarsus was convicted and later on on the road to Damascus gave his heart to Christ. So Stephen on this side of heaven did not have the opportunity of knowing that his death brought about the conversion of the greatest missionary who has ever lived. But I believe with all my heart when, when Paul got to heaven, one of the first ones he wanted to see was Stephen and tell Stephen what happened as a result of his faithful martyrdom. Now next I want to uh, address the subject of the uh, persecution that's going to come upon the earth in the last days. The persecution that uh, the Church of China, the Church of India, some churches in uh, various other uh, Islamic countries and so forth have been severe. Uh, but according to the prophecies of Scripture, uh, it's not as severe as it's going to get before the Lord returns. One of many things that Jesus prophesies about the end times is the fact that we will be severely and brutally persecuted as Christians. So I'm under the conviction myself very strongly that the reason God has allowed you as a church in China to be persecuted and some of the other parts of the world is to prepare you for these end times. So that when even greater persecution comes upon you, you will know what it's like, you'll know how to respond, and you know that you can survive and go through it even if you lose your life. And I feel very strongly also a conviction of the Spirit that the Western Church is going to have to go through a similar persecution as you as a church have. 我想我们在西方的教会也可能遭遇到类似的迫害来面对主的再来。So I urge you to pray for the Church of the West, specifically the Church of America and other Western countries, that God will give us the grace to go through the persecution as you have gone through it. 所以我希望大家也不要忘记为我们美国的教会来祷告，使美国的纯正的教会能够。
Now let's look in Scripture and see some of the things that we can expect to occur as we approach the, the, the imminent return of Christ. Let me give you some Scripture references and write them in your notes and then I'll begin to, to discuss each of these. Uh, the first reference is in the book of Matthew chapter 24. And uh, it actually goes through the, the last of the chapter, which is verse 51. In the book of Mark, it's found in chapter 13, verses 1 through 37. In the Gospel of Luke, it is chapter 21, verses 1 through 36. And in the Gospel of John, it's found in John chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. Now let's first turn to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Most of the prophecies are given in Matthew, but I'll point out a few things that are mentioned in the other gospel accounts that are that are omitted in Matthew, so that we'll have a true picture and a total picture of what Jesus said. Uh, 呃, 其他的经文呢, 稍微省略了一部分, 呃, 让我, 呃, 跟大家稍微说明一下, One of the first characteristics of the end times will be deception. 第一个就是有, 呃, 这个分化, 或者是, 呃, 混乱, uh, deception uh, is, is a very uh, uh, evil and uh, uh, satanic thing. Deception is being blinded by the enemy. So blinded by the enemy that what is right appears to be wrong and what is wrong appears to be right. The enemy so clouds our thoughts and our minds in deception that we, we uh, speak truth, we think, but it's a lie. And a person in deception doesn't know a lie from the truth. 然后这个欺骗的人也分不清哪一些真,哪一些是假的。A person who is deceived doesn't know they are deceived. 那个听的人也不知道听的是真的还是假的。So the sin of deception and the deception that's going to come upon the earth is going to be uh, a terrible thing. Jesus said, for example, there are going to be people who will kill you thinking they're doing God a favor. They're so deceived. In the name of their God, they will try to destroy you and, be, and because you are of the true God. So this is Satan's way of preparing the world to try not to, to try to get the world not to receive uh, the Messiah as it returns. 
，所以意思说在幕后呃魔鬼要千方百计，让我们呃搞不清谁是真正要来的基督。And he desires to to do this. He's already at work doing this. Uh, to keep us from、uh, being obedient to the Lord. 使我们呃不能够呃呃顺服我们的主。He blinds and deceives much of the church to where we don't build the church according to the design of Jesus. 他欺骗教会，使教会混淆，不能够看清楚怎么样按照基督的心意来建立教会。And his deception is very much like how he deceived、uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. 他这种蒙骗就相当于创世纪的时候，他欺骗亚当夏娃一样。How that Satan, in the form of a serpent, came to Eve and and spoke to her. 化妆成为蛇对夏呃夏娃讲话。And、uh, he pointed out the fruit、uh, in the garden that she was not to partake of. 指出伊甸园里面那个呃呃禁呃禁主禁果 ，and he made it enticing to her and made her have a desire to taste of that fruit。呃迷惑呃夏娃使她呃看上这个不可以吃的禁果。and you know how Eve responded by saying the Lord God said I'm not to do that。然后呃我们记记得夏娃的回应说我们是不可以呃吃这个禁果的。And Satan's response was to twist the word of God and say, "Did God really say that?" 然后呃，魔鬼就是扭转神的话。他说，难道神真的这么说吗 ？So what Satan was doing was trying to get Eve to get off the plumb line of the word of God to get a, get away from what God's word explicitly said. 所以神呃那个魔鬼就是要引诱夏娃不能够按照神话语这个标准。这个线索的原则来呃看事情。And because she gave in to this deception, she lusted for and desired this fruit and took it and ate it. 所以她撒呃夏娃就接受这种蒙骗，以及呃对看上这个禁果，把它摘下来吃了。And as you know the story, she gave it to her husband、uh, Adam and and. Instead of him taking the stand and saying that's against God's purpose and will and explicit word of God, he gave into the temptation as well. So he ate it and then gave it to Eve. Eve also accepted this deception. She should have been on the side of God and rejected this fruit. But she still accepted to eat the fruit. So Satan has been using deception and lies. So Satan has been using deception and lies. From the very beginning of the creation. So, in the creation, the devil has been using deception and lies to deceive God's children. That's one of the reasons why the Scripture teaches that we are to submit ourselves、uh, humbly to the authority of the Lord. So, we will be reminded of this once again. We must submit ourselves to the Lord. And why we should submit one to the other. And why wives should be submissive to their husbands? 就像呃妻子要顺服丈夫一样。And children submissive to their parents and so forth. 儿女也顺服父母，呃一呃都呃也是这样子。The reason submission is so important is because it's God's protection over us because of the the sin problem of being deceived. 因为顺服。呃，的重要，这是因为我们很容易受骗，只有顺服才能够免除这种被迷惑的陷阱。God did not give us、uh, leaders to ward it over us, but He gave us leaders who can teach the truth and be protect,、uh, be our protectors,、uh, like a a, a a shepherd would come against、uh, a wild animal trying to destroy the sheep. 所以神不是差派人来。控控制我们，却是来教导我们，呃，得到神的保护。像牧羊人遇到狼来的时候，他就挺身而出，保护他的羊群。Or like the protection of a、uh, of a wife whose husband loves her as Christ loves the church, and he by his protection she is submissive to him, and therefore he becomes a protector of her from the enemy. 所以就像丈夫挺身而出，呃，保护自己的妻子一样，要像基督保护教会一样，呃，为教会舍己。One of the greatest weaknesses of、uh, 
the male and the female, the male's greatest weakness is pride. 男女之别最大的是男生比较骄傲. And of course this comes from the enemy because it was pride uh, that uh, caused God to cast Satan out of, of heaven in the first place. 也因为骄傲的缘故, and one of the greatest weaknesses of the female is deception. 但是, uh, 女生的, uh, because before a uh, woman fell uh, from God's grace, women were receptive and open to the Lord. Uh, 女生会比较容易, uh, 接受, uh, 主, uh, Even today, uh, throughout the world, there are many women who are very open to the gospel and desire to serve the Lord uh, because they're receptive and open to spiritual truth. 因为他们的开放, 他们, 呃, 呃, 那么愿意, 呃, 接受, 所以普世, 很多地方, 往往都是女生, 或者是, 呃, 姐妹们, 会比较, 呃, 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 愿意起来, 服侍水, 呃, 服侍主, 呃, and this is the characteristic of the female going back to uh, Eve. 所以这个, 呃, 这种开放, 以及接受的这种的, 呃, 呃, but after the fall, uh, this receptiveness and openness was tainted by sin and it became a weakness of deception. That's one of the many reasons that the New Testament uh, teaches so strongly that we are to be submissive uh, in our relationships to one another and to others. Submission to authority is for our own protection. So deception is one of the primary things that we're going to see more and more of in the world as we come to the end times. A second thing that the scripture teaches us is that there will be many false Christs. This would be people who claim to be messiahs. 这是这些, 呃, 自称为是基督的, 呃, These would be false Christ, of course. 当然这是所谓的假基督. And there are people like this all over the world who appear on the scene saying, I'm the Messiah, I'm the returning Jesus. 你, 呃, and of course, uh, you know that you have in your own country a cult like this. But you're not alone. There are cults like this in other parts of the world as well. So you are confronted with the Eastern Lightning cult, but other countries are con confronted with other kinds of cults. Uh, 呃, 这里有, 呃, 东方闪电, and as we approach closer to the end times, you're going to have more and more people claiming to be uh, Antichrist or False Christ. 越接近末日, Another characteristic of the end times that, that uh, involves you and me as believers is that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, 第三个事情就是会发生的就是战争或者战争的谣言会发不断的传送 And nations will align with nations against other nations 民, uh, 国要共打国, And kingdoms will unite against other kingdoms 然后会联合起来攻击另外一个国 uh, We have seen within the last uh, hundred years uh, the first time that the, the world has had what we would call a world war. Uh, 
That would be where the nations of the world would divide up and fight other nations as a united uh, effort against one another. In what we call World War I, it was alignment of nations against Germany. In the, the Second World War, you have the alignment of all nations against Germany, uh, Italy, and Japan. These world wars were the first instance in, in human history where all nations divided against nations. There have been many wars and battles prior to this, but this is the first instance of the entire world uniting against nation against nation. Jesus said that there would be a time when kingdoms would uh, come against kingdoms. We have today the fanatical Islamic uh, peoples declaring war on the Jews and Christians. They're trying to divide the world between the Islamic and the Jewish and Christian. And they have vowed uh, through Bin Laden and others uh, to destroy all semblances of Judaism and Christianity. And the scripture says this is the kind of alignment of nations that Jesus was talking about. And as we approach uh, end times, there will be more and more alignments of kingdoms and nations against others. Another characteristic, uh, and we will stop our session here and pick it up next uh, session, is that uh, characteristic of, of uh, famines and pestilences. Uh, uh, even today, there are nations in Africa, for example, and the nation of North Korea, where people are dying by the, by the hundreds and thousands because of a lack of food. Uh, Sometimes the famine or lack of food is a result of, of drought or, or some natural catastrophe. Uh, and sometimes it's caused by a totalitarian government like uh, the North Korean government. But nonetheless, uh, famine is becoming more and more frequent in several parts of the earth. And according to scripture, famine will not just be isolated to Africa and maybe the Korean peninsula, but it'll be something that'll be rampant throughout the world. That indicates that there must be some sort of collapse of economies in order for the world to be going through such famine. Uh, 
So we can expect more and more famines as we get closer to the time of Christ's return. So in the future, there and uh, we'll pick up at this point and talk about pestilences, uh, diseases that will come upon the earth and, and other signs when we come back to our next session. Amen. Amen.